Okay, we have a, a spray sealing video here. Triple thick crystal clear glaze. The workable fixative. UV resistant clear. All right, now if I just want a really thick coating, of course the triple thick, just as its uh, name implies, gives a really thick coating. The workable fixative, it's a, it's a matte finish. And then the UV resistant clear is just going to give me a glossy but much thinner coat than the clear glaze. I bought a lot of these ones because they're so inexpensive right now. I don't know if it's uh, they're getting rid of it or what, uh, as far as the manufacturer goes, but I've been told that they, um, Amazon is not the only place to have this for under $4 a can right now. So, you know, really great uh, deal on that. I picked up several cans. The workable fixative is one that um, is going to be really good for um, my matte uh, paper or just surfaces in general where I want to retain that matte look. I suppose I could spray a glossy um, finished piece with a workable fixative and it'll turn it somewhat matte. Um, you know, if you want that type of look, you know, to give that kind of more satiny type of feel to it. So, uh, you know, it's a textural type of thing. The workable fixative, though, it's one that where you can go back on with dry media and to um, add additional layers with the things like the gloss. You know, it really seals things off to a glossy finish, so you wouldn't be able to reapply things like um, pastels, chalks, um, that type of uh, media on it graphite, you know, charcoal, etc. Okay, so that's what um, the workable fixative is for. The glossy um, things are really kind of more of the um, the finished um, last step in the process type of uh, sprays. Alright, so I found a lot of uh, different pieces and uh, some of them, boy, I, I don't even remember when I did them. It's been so long. But let's get started here. It's really, oh gosh, every time I sit up here to do this type of thing, the wind kicks up um, even stronger. You always want to do this in, a, I don't know, kind of a non-windy type of situation if you're using, if you're um, spraying uh, paper types of things. You don't want this to fall down and whatnot or, you know, blow around. And of course, you always want to do this outside. Okay, let's so let's see if we can see some differences here. I'll try to zoom in on these pieces, but I, I do want to get through these as fast as possible. Okay, so I can see a lot of. Um, I'm going to do this one in the uh, the UV resistant clear. Um, I can see a lot of saturation coming about right here, especially in comparison to the right hand side. So this really. Um, can do a really nice job in returning both the intensity and value of the um, the media as it looks when freshly applied. Sometimes these different types of inks dry to a dull sheen. Okay, this one right here. I really enjoyed doing this piece. It's a kind of a cave type of. Uh, situation. Um, I can tell that I did use a lot of the types of inks that um, have a tendency to dry in a bit of a dull sheen when used um, in multiple layers. Okay, a lot of inks don't look, don't dry to a dull sheen quite as much or they're not as apparent if they're on matte paper because it takes on a lighter look inherently. Um, because the media is being um, absorbed into um, the surface. But on glossy cardstock, a lot of that media stays on the surface more because it's more sealed off. So you can see quite a bit of a difference. Um, when, okay, I, I'm going to do this one on its side here. That was vertical, but this is uh, that's going to blow over if I uh, start spraying it that way. Okay. All right, let's see if we can see some differences here. Okay. And one of the things I did on here, too, is I utilized some um, alcohol inks. So the alcohol inks are kind of shiny in terms of their finish. So when the inks um, that I've used on here don't dry to a bit of a dull sheen, from a textural standpoint, those alcohol marks on here, these little touches that I put on there, can stand out too much, not in a good way, um, because of that textural difference, okay? So this way, 
when everything gets nice and saturated again, that alkyl ink should be more incorporated into it so I get the benefits of the color of it, but not the um, kind of the drawbacks of the textural difference, okay? So let's see here. It doesn't happen instantly. You have to have that um, spray kind of penetrate the surface and then that vibrancy and saturation really starts to come about. You can see me doing the short kind of burst spray style here and I'm probably about 12 inches away from the, uh, the piece. You have to go in a little bit more sometimes, um, you know, kind of the, the lower the, uh, the can gets in, in content and the, uh, and the, uh, uh, the charge is uh, kind of not as uh, strong anymore. All right, this one right here is one that I've already matted, or mounted, officially, onto that piece of paper there. I need to be really careful about that delicate application of the, uh, the pigment ink on here, those kind of rays. The rays up in the sky are developed with the use of dye-based inks, and the negative space creates the rays, but down here there's an official um, application of white pigment ink, and that will disappear if I go over it too much. So the best thing for me would have been to spray this before I mounted it, but, you know, I just went ahead and mounted it um, before doing that. I didn't want to wait, but um, that would have been the better way to go. Okay, so this one didn't change too much. I'm guessing those are the Marvy blue inks up top there. They don't really change too much. They don't get that kind of that um, dull finish when um, when applied in thick saturations, multiple saturations. Okay, this was a scene for my um, scenic stamping swap. And this, I wouldn't be surprised if this is 10 years old, at least, maybe more, I don't know. Could be 15 years old for I know, all I know. I can even see my my fingerprints up top here from um, just the multiple layers of saturation here. This has not faded out in all that time though, so dye-based inks are really good in terms of um, not fading as long as you just don't have them exposed to sunlight. I'm going to do some light exposure tests at some point in time, um, seeing um, just how light fast that means non-fading. Um, certain inks are um, pretty soon. Maybe I'll start that today. Okay, so this one has a lot of um, little different types of uh, touches right down here in the uh, the water in terms of details and things like that. That should stand out a little bit more, but let's give it a test here. Um, we'll start off on the uh, left side. Wow, that's quite a, that's quite instant. Um, that got quite a bit darker over there and more saturated. I used a lot of ink. This is a full page scene. A couple full page scenes today, you know. I don't I don't work that size too often. Been working a little bit more of that size over the last uh, year maybe, but especially kind of in those earlier days I didn't work this large um, very often at all. didn't use too much pigment ink on this, so I didn't have to kind of worry about the the amount of um, spraying that I did in here. There's a little bit of white pigment ink back here in the, uh, the bushes. This is by... Uh, oh, boy, I can't remember the name of that uh, stamp company. Always enjoyed that really big, uh, big piece there. All right, now this one is a matte, dark car, uh, paper here, pre-folded card. All right? So let's hit it with a workable fixative. I need to be careful about, or mindful at least, about that white pigment ink application of that light beam on here. But let's go over it here with a workable fixative and keep it uh, matte in the finish. Okay, now this is just more of a protective thing. It's not supposed to bring out, you know, like deep, you know, saturated layers of color because there aren't any applied here. It did make the paper a little bit darker, though, I believe, okay? And I would guess the workable fixative is probably 
It might be a little bit faster drying as well. Okay, let's see. That might be the only ones that I do right now. I, I need more boxes. I, I had such huge... Um, this is a very recent one. I need more boxes to keep these things flat as they're drying. Let's try this one with a triple thick glaze. Such a, a really like a nice jeweled type of look with these um, types of colors like that. So, right. I'm still learning how to use the triple thick because I, I want to use it in the same kind of application as the clear um, UV resistant clear or the Krylon Crystal Clear, but this one's just so thick, I, you know, if I stay kind of in the same, or if I do it at the same rate, um, I can get some drips going here. So maybe just a little bit farther away, and just a real quick spray like that, maybe. And it is really quite thick. Even just that minimal application, I can tell if it's, um, uh, as thick as, you know, multiple layers with the um, UV resistant clear, so it's pretty crazy. You know, I keep saying all these different types of things in terms of um, how to use something, but then I get that triple thick and it's, you know, I might be doing um, sprays like um, half as long, but it's triple thick, so I need to do it like one third. Okay, this one was for another bio swap by invitation only. That's that was the name of it. I believe this is um, probably Imaginaire Designs. So um, in all my different types of scenic swaps, it's not like a stampscape swap or anything like that. So what I like to do is I like to use stamps from my own private collection. I don't even know where that stamp is. It might have been. It might not even be mine. It might have been. Uh, I might have done this at a. Uh, had a scenic stamping retreat and used uh, Karen Wallace's stamps. Oh my gosh, look at that. Super dark green. Do you see that? Man, yeah. Look at that color come out like that. This might be a different paper because um, that um, ink penetration is getting so vibrant. Like, as soon as that hit the inks there. It got so much more vibrant. So that's the benefits of the sprays. Yeah, that type of deep vibrancy. Okay, it's getting a little breezy. I keep pulling out these gigantic pieces. Like I said, I don't work that large, but um, I don't know. Apparently I did for certain uh, pieces at some point in time. I mean, I remember doing all these ones. This one's definitely the, uh, the scenic stamping retreat at Cracker Box um, Palace, I believe, with these trees, and I think Haunted House, too, and I used, um, you know, other stampscapes, filler stamps around it. Okay, let's see here. Perfect for Halloween. I don't know. Good that I'm spraying a Halloween scene. I believe these greens over here are going to get Quite a bit more extreme. Let's take a look here. Yeah, not too much more extreme. Like I said, these ones might have been. Now it's starting. To, actually, it's starting to come around. That took a little bit for the uh, the spray to penetrate. I think on this paper, so I can see it kind of coming about. It has a kind of this um, kind of drag mark um, type of application of media right there. It looks pretty good in terms of it. It looks like it's like dripping, you know, <laughs> and old, you know, like stains on an old, uh, you know, wallpaper or something like that, like it'd be inside the house or something like that. I wanted the colors to kind of be dirty, you know and a little bit more kind of haunting. Okay, let's do one more here. Oh my gosh. 
That's why you don't spray on a windy day. Okay, I think that's going to be it. It's getting too breezy. All right, so I have some more to do, but those are some big ones there. Again, the three different types of ink uh, sprays here. Different brands of inks, but they're the great equalizer.